Korea DPR claims the FIFA World Cup title. More polytechnic institutions to address the space problem in tertiary institutions. And values with principles, the message to life. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Gabina. Hello and welcome to Sunday's News. We begin with what has been described by many as historic in the world of soccer, with Papua New Guinea as the host. The 2016 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup successfully ended on a high note, with Papua New Guinea being the host of this international event, a prestigious event ever to grace the shores of Papua New Guinea that has brought together supporters and fans. Over 14,000 were present at the National Football Stadium and showed their support to teams Japan, USA, Korea DPR and France. The final result shows Japan on third place after defeating the United States of America while Korea DPR defeated France. We'll have more of the FIFA grand finale in True Guy Sports. Lay police have shot dead one criminal while two others are in critical condition in hospital. Police were responding to disturbances at the Six Mile service station at 1 a.m. this morning where a group of 15 armed men under the influence of alcohol were threatening bystanders and holding up traffic. Police had to regroup after the first encounter where the first respondent police vehicles were shot at. They then approached the service station on foot and a shootout ensued. A young constable was nearly shot, but his attacker's gun jammed as he tried to pull the trigger. Metropolitan Superintendent Anthony Wagambi, who was on the scene, said the armed criminal was shot by police. Police later recovered masks, weapons and homebrew left by some members of the group who fled. Wagambi has issued a further warning to criminals to surrender to police or suffer the consequences. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says more polytechnic institutions will be built in the country to solve the limited space problem for school leavers. Officiating at the recent groundbreaking ceremony of the Simbu Polytechnic Institute, the Prime Minister said, the, uh, said education has been prioritized, receiving 3 billion kina in the national budget. Our journalist Fabian Hakalitz was in Simbu and files this report. This is the Rama in the Kumine district where the Simbu Polytechnic Institute will be built. On Friday, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and a government delegation were welcomed by hundreds of this waiting spectators for the groundbreaking ceremony. Provincial Governor Noah Cole, while welcoming the Prime Minister and the delegation, also thanked the national government for choosing Simbu. You know, mistake. I'm coming to bless, blam, blam, bless our plan. I'm going to go and roll into the school. Because this is our case economy. First of all, the beginning play you, you, you must only pass to make sure that there's a project by staff for a very long time. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said education is the government's key policy, providing pathways to strengthen the country's workforce. By Bilim Loyello Dreamer. And be important. Time only finish from grade 12, but look away. You must build him all as like institution, like make him so awesome, you make, give him all good plus hour and a skill. Lock him up in good plus in number, lock him behind time. The Polytechnic and TVET Impact Project Coordinator, Wilson Garu, said the Simbu Polytechnic Institute will cost 150 million kina. The clearance has already been done to one of the actual sites that will accommodate for all the workshops and classrooms, uh, laboratories, administration building. But there's two other locations within the same area that will also accommodate for the housing, student dormitory facilities and uh, water supply and power and other areas as well. Locals look upon this project as one of the agents of change in the province. <laughs> In terms of business spin-off, in terms of uh, education itself and uh, whatsoever. So people are almost through the project. I want the big project inside the local environment. 
With this new project, it has brought change and is anticipated to bring in more spin benefits for the locals and also the provincial government. And they've thanked the national government for realizing the need for an educated society. And there in my Simba province, Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Furthermore, Enga, East New Britain and Simbu provinces have been identified as homes to three more polytechnic institutions in higher learning. This is the latest decision of the National Executive Council. These are additions to the Lay Polytechnic Institute in Morabe province. It's welcome news for grade 10 and 12 school leavers. They can now further their education through several polytechnic institutions. The National Education Department's Polytech and TVET Impact Project Coordinator Wilson Garu thanked the national government for seeing the need to address the school system. We are now expanding and uh, the three institutions that I have just made mention, the Simbu Polytechnic, the Enga one and the Kokopo one will be catering for that with the other sister institutions including uh, the Lay Polytechnic. This Polytechnic institutions will offer higher learning diplomas and advanced diploma programs. This is some of the many opportunities that will also prepare students for university studies. What we are at present doing also is to consult the university's consent, the industry consent, to develop curriculum according to uh, the requirements that they will want to, so that there is a pathway between the polytechnic and the universities uh, when they graduate. With the government support, Mr. Garu says the Simbu Polytechnic Institute will become the model school in the country because of the infrastructure and support. Fabian Hucklitz, National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has made strong commitments to the people of Simbu province. Funding will be allocated for the Bromel High School, the road from Gumine to Karmui, bridges to connect the highway and the ceiling of these roads. The Prime Minister also announced some of the high-impact projects that will occur in the Highlands region. Foundation for infrastructure. Next week, on, on the Desla Moon, uh, in a busy time, but we will start the launching program for the Highlands Highway. But we will start the four lane road for Hagen City, Kamosen. But we will continue to come. ADB put in 500 million kina, and we will fix him Simbu Sex Center. So, Simbu Sex Center. 500 million kina, you know, kina, US dollar. US dollar. So, but you will start the work now, you will have a sour. Among stories after the break, the call to uphold values and ethnical, ethical principles, a footnote. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Values with morale principles are the compass of life. This was the message from Chancellor of the Pacific Advantage University, Pastor Glenn Townend. Speaking in today's graduation, Pastor Townend urged the graduates to embrace values and promote ethical principles in their professional working careers in this challenging time. The graduation saw over 100 students graduating with flying colors in various disciplines at its Koyari Park campus outside of Port Moresby. Despite the unbearable heat, parents, relatives and friends of the graduates flocked to the university chapel to witness the graduation ceremony. The 2016 graduating class saw a total of 194 students who attained degree and postgraduate certificates in various schools and disciplines, bachelors of arts, business, education, nursing and science. Academic awards were given to top students in each discipline. Chancellor Pastor Glenn Townend, speaking during the graduation, urged graduates to embrace church values and principles in their professional working careers. The final word of acknowledgement by President Willie Kam thanked all university staff who have contributed one way or the other in the university life. Pacific Adventist University was established in 1997 following an act of parliament and is run by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It enrolled both national and international students from across the Pacific region. Erika Rupma, National MTV News. 
Students undergoing medical doctor's training under Divine Word University's Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery or MBBS program will benefit from the two simulation rooms that will enhance their knowledge and skills in their career. The simulation rooms are nearing completion at the Medeng campus and will be ready for use in the year 2016, 2017 rather, academic year. While infrastructure development is vital to enhance the MBBS program, two medical doctors teaching in DW's Medicine and Health Sciences faculty, Drs. Harry I. G. Lang and John Benjamin, returned from a fact-finding mission at the Cabrini Hospital in Melbourne, Australia, where they studied how the simulation room is used. Both doctors said their visit was fruitful as they saw how the simulation room is used for training medical doctors. This will help with the configuration and preparation for the use. Simulation is a very powerful tool and a new trend in assisting medical training around the world where learning takes place in specially designed rooms. Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, Dr. Clement Malau, said DW's MBBS program focused on training rural doctors. Last Friday, National Planning Department's First Assistant Secretary, Joshua Himina, led a team who visited the new building complex and were impressed with its progress. It will house lecture rooms, seminar rooms, two simulation rooms and office for the faculty staff. In the meantime, the National Health Department approved DW to roll out the MBBS program, which means Students will continue to second year with new intakes in the 2017 academic year. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. There is a need for more funding for strategies and policies in addressing violence against women and sorcery-related violence. This is from the UN Women Executive Director, Dr. Fumzil Mambo, who is in the country to support the United Nations 16 Day of Activism. The activities that have begun on November 25th and will end on December 6th, which is Human Rights Day. Equality uh, comes free. Actually, it needs investment, it needs resources, it is complex, and therefore um, governments need to have budgets, uh, and the budgets must be proportional to the size of the problem. So in a country like Papua New Guinea, where the problem is so big, Clearly, uh, the need for investing in this uh, area of work is significant. Aihi Vaki, the Secretary for the Implementation and Rural Development Department, has appealed to provincial administrations to submit all outstanding DSIP acquittals. He revealed that over 90 acquittals have not been submitted since 2013. The lack of acquittal submissions have resulted in a substantial amount of SIP grants being parked at the DIRD and has crippled the department's ability to effectively monitor and report development. And Chukai Sports is next. I'll be back with all the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup Grand Final updates. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome to True Guys Sports. Korea DPR came from behind and secured a 3-1 win over France in last night's grand final match of the 2016 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. Korea DPR fought hard throughout the tournament and successfully defeated France, claiming the title for the second time after their first win in 2006. A halftime score of one all saw Korea's return in the second half, scoring another two goals, sealing their second title after 10 years. Meanwhile, Japan finished on the third spot after defeating the United States by one goal to nail yesterday. Substitute Mami Ueno's goal in the 87th minute led victory, crushing the United States. 
And to top off their successful final play yesterday's in a 1-0 win against USA for bronze, Japan's match-winning gold scorer Mami Ueno was awarded the Adidas Golden Boot. This came in recognition of her scoring prowess and in which she won with a match-scoring average of three in the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup, Papua New Guinea. Fans and supporters were present at the Jacksons International Airport this morning to bid farewell to the four remaining teams with gifts from Papua New Guinea. 2016 World Cup champion Korea DPR was the last that have departed this afternoon. Runners-up France departed this morning, then followed by this morning, followed by Japan's young Nadeshikos, and a humble USA also made a quiet exit. We'll have the weather details after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, fine although cloudy at times in Port Mosby and mostly fine for Daru, Kerima, Alotau and Popendetta. In the Mamase region, a shower or two for Leh and it's mostly fine in Medang, Wewek and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands, it's mostly fine for Kavian, Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka and a shower or two for Blorengau. And in the Highlands region, all centers expecting light showers than morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux. And that's the news, sports and weather for this Sunday, the 4th of December 2016. From the entire news team, I'm Lorenga Bina. Pleasant viewing. Good night.